working by any data, part of our view. So develop interest and uh, it's always key for pathological correlation that is required. Otherwise everything looks same. And we do not say definitely when biopsy is sent to a seen biopsy, we do not say it's unremarkable and send it. Because we know the clinician has done a biopsy. Why will we do a biopsy of a normal tissue? Then we say, yeah, let us write a report as chronic dermatitis. Because it is definitely not normal. In fact, we sign it off as uh, normal, unremarkable, so chronic dermatitis. So then, why does he do a biopsy there for a case? So it's probably not a very clear cut case of where he can he could be diagnosed, or he has a lot of differential diagnosis which has to be confirmed by the supercological examination. And uh, we need to be friendly with the dermatologist. So I make uh, many dermatology teachers come to the department to see the slides. No, many slides I may not uh, write the report, so I, I just call them so that I show them also. This is just to make them uh, their interest. So this is again what uh, my superpectogram says. Biopsy has four dimensions, this is. So the length, breadth and depth belongs to the pathologist. So the fourth one, including the fourth one, time, the four dimensions are where the clinician is, is because he has time. So he can follow. So he does the biopsy and sends to us. So he buys the time also there. Not to know what it is. And the clinical pathological correlation is the one which provides all the four dimensions. And as pathologists, one of our responsibility is to look at the specimens, gross specimens. But what about the skin biopsies? We are just looking at the microscopy. So the grossy or microscopy is done by a clinical colleague. So he writes everything. And most of the dermatologists I have seen, they write a very nice uh, clinical history. They write the differential diagnosis. And that is where I think uh, I, I always tell other uh, uh, specialties follow what, how, uh, they feel the request for and all. It's very essential for us. Otherwise, in many of the cases, we cannot proceed further. So, skin is a mirror of the body. Yes, there are diseases confined primarily, primarily to the skin. Plus, there are systemic diseases where a lot of manifestations in the, in the skin. So, they tell us about or they give a clue to that line. Disorder. So look at the skin for specific manifestation of diseases there. So the pathological changes in the skin involve the epidermis, the dermo-epidermal junction, the dermis, the papillary dermis, and the reticular dermis and the subcutaneous tissue. You can uh, see that in the zoom the image. So fundamental principle of dermatological diagnosis is recognition and evaluation of changes in various parts of the skin. So they say go to the particular part of the skin where the pathology is. So to know where the pathology is, so we have to definitely look at the clinical diagnosis, then go back and then see the slides and look for abnormality and then concentrate more. But the best approach I tell you is go methodically. Start from the keratin layer and then come towards the deeper aspect is the deepest is the subcutaneous tissue. So the objectives of today's uh, session are this is just to get familiar with the language a dermatopathologist speaks. It's totally different from what a general pathologist speaks. So glossary of terms. Let us define the terms. It's not just definition. I have a lot of pictures. So you need to see and then recognize them. I am concentrating mainly on epidermal changes because dermal changes all of us are familiar and we are used to recognizing dermal changes. No, except probably for elastic tissue changes or whatever. Other, cha other diseases that occur in the dermis, whether it be fungal infection, random access infections and all that. So we are quite used to it. It's not a difficult entity for us. And then Lastly, but giving most and most important is at least the end of this session, I should be able to inspire you to learn dermatopathology and become dermatopathologist. So you should develop that love towards seeing the skin slides. 
No, or we give importance, I think. Whenever uh, we give so much importance, you know, to take care uh, for our facial skin. So why not the skin biopsy? So let us look at it with utmost love and interest. Histology of the skin, a brief, uh, uh, just a quick go through because we have learned it in first year. And those PGs uh, you joined pathology, uh, I don't know whether you have uh, started with histology. Let us just brush through histology of the skin. So the epidermis has two types of uh, cells, the keratinocytes and the dendritic cells. How do we identify the keratinocyte? We know whenever we talk about keratinocyte, it's a squamous cell. It's got abundant cytoplasm and then intercellular bridges. Then the second type is the dendritic cells which have clear cytoplasm. So we put three cells under this category, melanocytes, lacrimal cells and the Merkel cells. Okay, what is this? Keratinocyte? Yes, abundant stable cytoplasm and a very important characteristic of epithelial cells is look at the nucleus, nice, vesicular prominent nucleoli and are they connected to each other? Yes, you can see the desmosomes are the intercellular branches. So, keratinocytes are arranged in five layers. The basal layer is the basalis, stated basalis, then the spinous layer, the granular layer. So, all these three constitute the stratum malpigian and the viable layer. Then we have the cordy layer and the stratum leucidum, which is intervals between the two only at certain places like palms and souls. So let us look at stratum basalis. Is the basement membrane very clearly seen here? Why is it so clearly seen? Yes? Special stain is done. What is that special stain that is done? Pass. So the air is stain. So look at the basal cells. There is a single layer of collagen cells. This I am stressing uh, for the benefit of our uh, clinical PGs who are here with us. So elongated cells, the long axis being perpendicular to the basement membrane. Then the more basal we look at here, the entire thickness appear, appears uh, blue. And nuclei are also elongated. I think you can appreciate the elongated nucleus when in comparison with the round nucleus. And look at the tip of the cells, they contain brown, black, melanin. Yes. They are connected to each other by desmosomes and through the basement membrane by the desmosomes we are not able to see here. We do not see that. And they contain cytoskeletal tonofilaments and uh, this is the place where we see mitotic activity. So this is just a picture after. Can you appreciate what is very clearly seen here? The basement membrane. The, the basin cells, sorry, not the basin membrane, the basin cells. Can you appreciate the melanin there at the tip? So how would this lesion appear clinically to our uh, uh, dermatologist? Definitely it's a hyperpigmented lesion. Anything else that you can see? We are talking about basin layer, right? Yes, concentrating only on basal layers. Increased pigment, okay. So we, we have not seen something else that is there. Yes. So this is again the basal layer. So another cell that is there in the basement, uh, in the basal layer is, you see the cells, cells which have a clear cytoplasm, they are the melanocytes. Did we observe melanocytes in the previous slide? No, we never gave it for. So if we just go back and look at it, yes, melanocytes will be looking at us. Even if we do not look at it, no, those cells look at uh, us. So one melanocyte got 10 cells in the basal layer, and this is a mel from pure melanin is transferred to the basal cells by the dendritic processes. So you know about the markers of melanin, I think uh, Dr. Shami was talking about it uh, in the morning. See, these are the dendritic processes. How the melanin is transferred to the other keratinocytes. What do you observe now? 
keratin and the keratin layer, your eyes are looking at the entire thickness. Right? You are not just looking at the basket cake pattern because now you know all the layers that are there in the epidermis. So with the adequate fixation of soluble constituents within it, the body cells, all this gets dissolved during processing. That's why you see it as clear cells with clear cytoplasm. Yes. But just take it the same for comparison. But now we are looking at something else. This slide was earlier shown to look at or compare the granular layer. Now just look at the keratin layer. So this is an artifact, it is, it is removed, this is detached, so that's why it's looking empty here. Yes. So this is the thick keratin, I'll tell you how to appreciate the different types of keratin. Yes. When straighten you see them, now many a times if they do not tell us the sign of biopsy, if straighten you see them is that you can say that this is from an area, yeah, the palm or so, we are just adjacent to that. So, this is a neosmophilic zone layer that is in between the stratum magnesii and the keratin layer. See, very well appreciated. This is just a HLV stain. So, homogeneous eosmophilic zone. So, we call this a stratum disjunctor. What is it that is that the arrows are pointing at? <laughs> there are the reaching points of the retail images. The epidermis with extensions into the dermis. So you can take it in upward projection. So this is the papillary dermis, then the reticular dermis, the legal dermis, and of course we are not seeing the subcutaneous tissue here. What changes do we see in this limb? Yes? You agree this is skin? This is epidermis? Oh, this is mucous membrane. This is mucous membrane. Standing by its part is not characterizing epithelium. So, are you seeing the granular layer here? There is no granular layer. So, this is mucosa. We need to differentiate. Mucosa from epidermis. So that's about the histology. Shall we move on to the epidermal changes? Yes? Nobody is sleeping? So epidermal changes result from abnormal cell turnover, cellular, abnormal cellular differentiation or abnormal cell tolerance. I was asking you what in what way, what different way I am showing the slides. Sir. We want to stop on, right? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah, I have just opened it in photo viewer. We can enlarge it, zoom in. Is it helpful? Yes. You know, better than uh, looking at the small picture. And just zoom in as long as you know how much I have you know, you can uh, zoom. So next time, the histopathology pictures when you want to see, you may just, you know, as you click the pictures, put them. Don't put them in PowerPoint and then change it. That is better, but some of the pictures are put in PowerPoint. And when you save the PowerPoint, save it as JPEG format. Yes, the changes in the keratin layer. Hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, changes in the granular layer, epidermal hyperplasia or acanthosis. Epidermal atrophy, spongiosis, intracellular edema, acantholysis, necrosis, dyskeratosis, liquefactive degenerative basal cells, nesting or plates of cells, onsis, microabsis, pigmentary changes. So almost all these changes I am just describing, then defining them and showing you the picture so that you identify the morphology in any given biopsy. Like mathematics, so all the features put together, you have to come to a conclusion. You have to come to what that disease or the diagnosis of that particular patient. The dermal 
terminal junction, yes, I am not uh, dealing with this and terminal changes also I am not uh, dealing with so many changes can happen in the domains. So, orthokeratosis. So, what was the character we saw in the initial uh, slides of the normal histology? Vasculitary. So, that is a normal keratinization. Process of normal keratinization which leads to production of statement body. What is hyperkeratosis? Increase in the thickness of the stratum corneum or keratin. So either by normal or abnormal keratinocytes. So this same picture we saw for basket B appearance. Okay. So hyperkeratosis would be absolute or related. So when do we say there is absolute hyperkeratosis? We look at the granular layer as well when it is increased. So relative is when the epidermis is atrophic. So relative lymphocytosis is a term which we commonly use in hematology. So it's relative lymphocytosis, it's not absolute lymphocytosis. So similarly epidermis is atrophic, so the keratin looks more. Then it, it could be due to increased formation or due to abnormal retention. So look at this layer, I am sure this diagnosis is very very characteristic. Diagnostic features this biopsy has helps you to give up, uh, helps you to identify this lesion. But just look at the stratum corneum. How is the keratin layer here? Is it basket we? No. How is it? It is in layers. Tell me your cyst where you see keratin in layers. Layers of keratin, laminated keratin the same, epidermolysis, epidermal inclusion cyst. Very important features because we need to differentiate it from sebaceous cysts, where it is homogenized. Then we come back and look at the lining. So if it is just like the skin, we call it as epidermoid cyst. So if it is without granular layer, we call it as a fibre of the sebaceous cyst. So look at the hypogranulosis here. So this is epidermal atrophy. So look at the keratin. So it looks more here because the epidermis is atrophic. This is just relative and absolute hyperkeratosis. So hyperkeratosis types of laminated, compact, massively polyvinyl epidermolytic. So this is laminated, lamina, layers, laminated. Where is we use this laminated appearance? Where is something is laminated. It tells us that at regular interval something is being added. Yes? Hydratic cyst. Okay. And then? Bone. Yes. Then? Yeah? Some more bones. Yes. Concentric laminated uh, calcification, calcified structures. And any other any other uh, stone when you look at a cross section you can make out yes. 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 rings, especially with the mixed uh, stone or uh, mixed gold stone. So this is laminated. That what happens if the lamina come together? It becomes compact. Now layers they come together as compact. What is happening here? is compact. Normally what we see on the palms and so compact hyperkeratosis. So lines and fixed chronic is just taken by example. So how does the keratin term? This basket we this basket we is normal but if it is exaggerated it gives us a clue to the underlying disease. So basket we type of hyperkeratosis always remember three diseases at least Veruca, sorry, tinea vesicular, veruca, plana, and ichthyosis vulgaris. Let us not just say, oh, this is basic with keratin, it is normal, and then keep this line away. So, what is this? Where is the keratin here? In addition to being on the surface, it is entering into the follicle, it is plugging the follicle there. So, this is follicular type of hyperkeratosis where increased keratin is present in the pyrosebaceous ostia. Some of the diseases are LSEA, lichen sclerosis and atrophicus, keratosis pyratus, BLE, active vulgaris, lichen 
are, you know, the, what is this disease? It's like a thing. Very characteristic, all features are there. This slide I can take it for uh, demonstrating and should be here. Hyperkeratosis and of course polypillar hyperkeratosis. What has happened to this layer? Homogenized, right? There are three zones characteristically. Endipatal is a homogenized zone, inflammatory cells, ketosis. So this is license ketosis and hypothesis. So this is just to show how the keratin is plugging the follicles. So follicular type of hyperkeratosis. Hamilton features again in hyperkeratosis is lost to all the spectral lines. Then epidermal lighting. So what is this type of keratinization? Compact hyperkeratosis with peculiar degeneration of the upper stage of plant feature. I show you the picture, you can appreciate that. So this type of keratin, if it is present hyperkeratosis, so you should think of congenital epidermal endroderma, epidermalitic keratoderma, linear epidermal needles, needles pomodonicles, epidermalitic epidermoma. So it could be sometimes incidentally finding in some of the biopsies where the lesion, where the skin or the mucosa is present adjacent to the lesions like squamous cell carcinoma or basal cell carcinoma. What is a very evident here? You are giving that there is hyperkeratosis. This hyperkeratosis looks like laminate, yes. But you know, calling it as laminated hyperkeratosis because there is a finding here. Just look at the epidermis. Yeah, epidermis, you know, cytolysis. So this is like a gunshot, you know, epidermis is blown by a gunshot. So if it is associated with epidermal necrosis or uh, uh, absence of these cells, destruction of the cells and all like that, and we do a more lighting type of hyperkeratosis. And parakeratosis. Normally, a cell becomes, once it becomes keratinized, it loses its nucleus. If the nucleus is weakened, you call it as parakeratosis. So, finding different types of parakeratosis, again, helps us to diagnose lesions. So this is departure from normal qualification. Hyperkeratosis in which nuclei are retained and it's due to rapid epidermal turnover. And one feature is most of the cases wherever we see parakeratosis, the granular cells are absent. But they are inversely proportional. So it's a non-specific change but gives a clue to the disease. Is it appreciable here? What type of keratin? Look at all the other features also. Basket feet keratin. Probably this layer shows. Yeah, this looks more than the pupils also for us. I'll show you the skin slide. So depending on how the paragonotic scales are uh, the cells are distributed, then classified as confluent, focal, columns, alternate. Confluent is extensive in large areas. So that is in psoriasis or guys. So common lesion that is biopsy, then Bowman's disease, then small foci are seen that is focal in Verica vulgaris, LSE, parasoriasis or vitreasis was here. Then polyps, if the polyps that is chondroid lamella in borokeratosis, alternate is in actinic keratosis. It is defined in this term. If you appreciate the parakeratotic uh, layer here, parakeratosis, retention of the nucleus in the keratin layer. So we appreciate that this is keratin layer by its color. It is deep eosinophilic. So it is diffuse. So it is confluent. So look at this lesion now. Look at this keratin. There is parakeratosis. May not, this picture may not be that clear. But in addition, there are some other cells. I will show you many slides on this. There are neutrophils associated. So, parakeratosis is associated with neutrophils, mundrose absence, yeah. so yes. So, what has happened to the parakeratosis here? You can make out the parakeratosis. It is slightly heat plugged here. And this is again with mundrose micro abscess. This is with We are not seeing hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis anywhere. So it is focal and then cat-like. 
So this is piling up of paraperitonic cells. This is coronoid. This is called as coronoid lamellae. So pulpy and then capillae. So I told you about porokeratosis where we see such uh, paraperitonic I think this is uh, very nicely appreciable. So wherever there is paraperitonic, this is also granular layer. Just look at this and then look at the granular layer. Hardly one layer, probably one layer or one cell thick. Now, what can hydrokeratosis? See, so much of hydrokeratosis looks like lamellae, but we are concentrating on the parakeratosis. So, look at the parakeratosis and then concentrate on the granular layer. Are you able to see the granular layer here? No. There is no granular layer at all here. So this is focal, this is horizontal, you may say alternative also. So it is present here but not present in the adjacent area. So it is present here then more on the capillary. So there is another entity that, that many books describe it as shoulder paraperitosis. That is, when you see a follicular plugging, this is the follicular, follicular plugging of keratin. So if you see paraperitosis here, probably this looks like a shoulder. And that's for the follicular disease. So this is shoulder paraperitosis. So horizontally alternating. So we saw this alternating type of paraperitosis. Next, the granular cell changes. They could be increased or decreased. So increased is hypergranulosis associated with hyperkeratosis. So, what if you uh, so much used to see in the case of lichen planus, where there is wet shaped hypergranulosis. Then, uh, when you come again, this is another thing. I will show you how the keratin layer and parakeratosis and granular layer will be. Decrease is hypergranulosis. And this is associated with paraperitosis as we saw. And one of the examples you know is Veruca vulgaris. So we are concentrating now on the granular layer. Can you see the granular layer? So the cell is just standing up. So prominently the dark areas. the granular cells that they are not uh, increased here. This is hypogranulosis because of parathyrin, associated parathyritosis. So this is again another example for absence of granular layer. So this is hypergranulosis and this hypergranulosis is Wet shape, typically wet shape hypogranulosis and hyperkeratosis laminated type. Characteristic features, other features I will just tell you here are basal cell degeneration. Then you can make out the colloid bodies or the civetae bodies, the single necrotic cells. So, lichen pigments, a lichenoid infiltrate, which is closely hugging the epidermis. And epidermal changes, ectosis. You know what is hypoplasia. But let us just know the types of epidermal hypoplasia ectactosis. So it refers to increase in thickness of stage of magnesia due to increase number of cells. This may be focal or widespread and may show downward elongation of retake or upward elongation. If it is upward elongation, then the lesion would be obviously seen, seen on the skin as verrucous lesion or a thick plate. Then patterns may have diagnostic significance. So the types of psoriasiform, irregular, pseudoepithelial matters, papillary, polvillary. So we know all this, but we are just looking at all these again. Psoriasiform is more or less regular elongated retail ridges with normal retail papillary relation. I will show you the picture. Then irregular is uneven elongated and bulbous. Like Then, so the epidermatis is marked in hypoplasia, which we 
Similarly, the scale looks like malignancy. Uh, this is in uh, many family infections. Tuberculosis very close to this, character gantoma. And polyrate is the affected bleeding, which is curved towards the lesional area. Pyogenic granuloma likely to this angiogeratoma. Papillating is papillomas, like you know, where there is finger-like projections on the surface, where you have a is and necrocaratosis. Just look at this, retail images. Is it regular? Yes. So there is acanthosis. This is only a form type of acanthosis. There is regular elongated retail ages. What has happened to the papillae here? They also appear elongated. So there is no loss of retail papillary relation here. So this is compared to cabin foot appearance. This picture I took from my IGD group one of the uh, article that was a review article written by I think Poker is a link. One of the authors here has taken appearances in the history of the of ecology and uh, shown on as a meaning. So, normally about 10% of patient cells are in proliferative phase, whereas in the acids you see not of cells which are regularly, uh, which are showing uh, the mitosis. So, this is again psoriasis for hyperplasis, irregular elongation of the retail ages. But what has happened to the retail here? Chronic stage. They have become friendly, they all fused together. Yes. This is a better picture compared to the previous one. It's a regular elongation of the retail bridges. This is psoriasis form hyperplasia. If this is present, yes, we know this region could be psoriasis. But we should remember that many of the dermatologists say, especially chronic dermatitis, they could show this type of hyperplasia. So, yes, form hyperplasia. What is this lesion? What are the cells that are proliferated? They are more bluish. This is this. So, now what keratin is there? It's irregular hyperplasia. What lesion is this? Symbolic keratosis, yes. So, this again from the same book, it is just showing antler type of downward. I told you, whenever there is acanthosis, the epithelium could grow downwards or it could go upwards. So this is downward growing epidermis. This is again with baby law, but it has a typical appearance. What is this appearance called as? Stuck on end appearance. What is that stuck on end appearance? Stuck on end appearance. So only this is the lesional tissue. Take a scale and then put it, join the normal skin. The normal skin is not there on this side. So the entire lesion is about that. So stuck on an appearance. So epidermal hypoplasia, acanthosis with papillary projections are going deep or they are very broad retail ridges. Look at this. This is a very tiny lesion. Maybe uh, just 2 to 3 millimeters. You, you can see the lesions uh, that would be very nicely seen clinically also. The biopsy is in just one low power field. You can see all the pathological changes. See, this lesion is so small, it is in between two retail ridges, that's all. And it's just widening the retail ridges. But what are they looking at? They're concentrating on the epidermis here. What is the epidermis doing? The retail ridge. So it is holding it, it is inward bending or it is holding the lesion. So this is the choleric type of hyperplasia I told you, like claw touching the ball appearances. Very typical of lighting into this, we may see it in injured keratoma or we may see it in biogenic granuloma also. How the retail edges around the lesion? are elongated and then bending or curving towards the lesion. It looks as if they are holding the lesion. So this is the entire lesion. About the lesion, what has happened to the epidermis? This is the atrophy. And this is the lesion with inflammatory cells and even epithelial cells with granulomas. So this is like the epidermis. This is irregular. There is no regular 
factors in the epithelial, hyperlipid, and pancosis. So this is again a pancosis with retained ridges which are elongated. So this is it right here. Something like super epithelial matrix matrix in which we could see on the skin that covers many of the bigger lesions, even the fungal infections. This is super epithelial matrix. Hyperplasia. So unless we know this uh, entity of a beginner, you may call it as panic and see too. Papillomatosis. Very nice papillomatosis. And how is this papillomatosis? Short spiral. So a sharp spike there. Short spiral. So look at the hyperkeratosis here and the short spiral. I'll show you. So this is also papillomatosis. This is again papillomatosis is there but it is more of irregular hyperplasia. This is again short spiral pattern and then basic free characterization. Look at this. The comparison short spiral line. So it's a body keratosis, acrokeratosis, where you see forms. Sometimes in a keratosis like it does. Three patients you should remember for child spiral appearance. Papillomatosis. And what has happened to the keratin layer here? Basket weak hyperkeratosis, papillomatosis, and uh, not much of vacuolization here. That looks like a vulva. This is digitate hyperplasia. Yes. Next is epidermal hydrophy. And the same layers are five or less than. That we call it as atrophic epidermis. Increase thickness of loss of retail base, lot of lesions, you know. Even here we even maintain psoriasis as one of the conditions for atrophic epidermis. And this is where the suprapapillary area, when I discuss the case, I will show you that feature, shows thinning. That's a nice skin, lichen famous atrophicus, then lichen sclerosis and atrophicus and various lesions. There are a big list of diseases for atrophic skin, atrophic epidermis. No retail effects, the number of cells are less. Look this flat. See the atrophic epidermis. Then here it is, deep down, no retail face. This is again atrophic epidermis. Next is spongiosis. Spongiosis is accumulation of edema fluid between the epidermal cells. And when the spongiosis is severe, it gives rise to a recycle formation of the cycle. Then uh, this would be due to increased permeability of fluid. Uh, the mechanism I know the with it. And whenever there is spongiosis, we have to look for associated inflammatory cells that are present. So we have to see what kind of inflammatory cells that are associated with this. So I will uh, uh, spongiosis in your pupils. It's one example again is psoriasis. Spongi spongiosis from vascular cobos. Then uh, spongiosis with lymphocytes like eczema and triacidosia. Spongiosis with the osophils, incontinent, incontinentia, pigmenta. So this is spongiosis. You can see a lot of acellular zones like you know, the edema fluid separating the cells. Here are zones that are seen. So here, there is spongiosis but so what has happened to the spongiosis here? It is extensive. And you know, you, you can imagine how the lesion would be clinically. So there is a bulla that is formed here. So this is again with eosnophis. Look at the spongiosis. It is so minimal with neutrophilic infiltration. High spongiosis. This would be one feature in many of the 
chronic neurotractors. Again, this is one to assist with the cycle formation. This is with dormant neutrophils, the psoriasis. Then intracellular edema. This is when edema fluid is within the cells, within the cells. Uh, this leads to vaccinization of the cells in state of bacteria. And cells appear in large. This is what we say balloon down, balloon degeneration. Then marker edema with pale cytoplasm is balloon degeneration. Then uh, marker edema with loss of cell wall and multinocular vesicle formation. We call it as reticular degeneration. So look at this. See, you know, cells how they are swollen. So this is balloon degeneration. Classical of viral infection. So look at intracellular edema. So this is extensive reticular, what I, I, I told you, intracellular edema. This is the coilocytic change. So this is again intra epidermal, the heavy heavy disease what uh, we saw. This is not that so extensive. So then the necrotic cells. All of you know about the symmetric bodies. You have seen symmetric bodies? Colloid bodies. Yes, which condition? Not just lichen platelets, there are so many conditions. Especially these symmetric bodies are in abundance in lichenoid drug eruptions, you know, more drug compared to lichen platelets. So necrot necrosis can be extensive or focal. No, extensive necrosis. No, plate, you are getting a lot of skin biopsy from medical legal cases. No, that the electrocution. So they say exit wound, entry wound and all that and they do a skin biopsy and send uh, uh, for a pain. So this is single cell necrosis is scattered. Right? Only few conditions that are uh, written down. So we need to differentiate a necrotic cell from a dyskeratotic cell. Have you seen a dyskeratotic cell? Dyskeratosis. Thomas and Kassim, I am sure all of you have seen many cases, many slides. What is dyskeratosis? Individual cell keratinization. No? This is what uh, probably you have uh, seen. Yes. Look at this. This is a eosinophilic round structure. It is a necrotic keratinocyte. There is no nucleus for this. So this is a colloid body or a symmetric body. It could be seen in the papillary dermis and goes described that it could be seen up to the superficial that is a stated corneal also. What is a dyskeratotic cell? This is just to compare. It's not a dyskeratotic cell but I am telling you what is that cell? Even that appears pain. It has a keratinized appearance that it has nucleus that is stated. But do we expect keratinization to occur in the basal cells or in the spinous layer? No. We expect the cells to keratinize only in the superficial. Keratinized cells to be present in the superficial layer. So if you see a keratinized cell in the layers beneath, we call it as this keratosis. So this keratosis has, again the cells have the use of like uh, uh, cytoplasm because of keratin, but there is a nucleus that is retained. So this is a dyskeratotic cell. Is a layer. You can see the nucleus that is present. Yes, this keratosis, lot of conditions that are associated with this keratosis. So, what, what are the features that you are seeing here? Yeah. Hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, and then separation, yes, acanthrolysis. Probably this keratosis. The cell which have got eosinophilic cytoplasm, nice nucleus, then the lower layers or the stadium spinosum. So, have you heard of heart stones and brains? So, this is typical barrier disease is a cleft supra basal. This is the basal layer, supra basal cleft, with lot of nucleated cells. So, heart stones are also dyskeratotic cells, so which have a central pyknotic nucleus and surrounded by a clear halo. So, all these are 
This also you can see is a quadrant. But the other cells which have a slightly elongated nucleus, so they are called as grains. They are also dyskeratotic cells, but we differentiate both by the appearance of their nucleus. Now some have elongated nucleus like this. So they are the grains and larger cells are the columns with the clear handle. We can think of and for these as the grains, elongated nucleus, and those with the round nucleus are the constrons, and the clarity, of course, the clear pattern is not seen here. Yes. A dyskeratotic cell. So just like the constrons we were describing, a clear halo around the nucleus and then keratinization. Liquefactive regeneration of the basal cell is hydrophic vacuolar regeneration with, sub with subsequent disintegration of the basal cells. And all almost all these lipidoid patients show this basal cell regeneration. So, with basal cell regeneration, what happens? Basement membrane, not the soil initials, they uh, slide, so it is not there at all, it is disrupted. So it has given rise to Max Joseph space here. See, extensive degeneration. See, Max Joseph space is very clearly see. Sometimes this could be extensive, so this is minimal here. The usually is association with Pigment incontinence. You can see macrophages. So this is again basal cell, vascular regeneration of the basal cells. So the space is more here. It may lead to bullous lichen cleavers. This is lichen cirrhosis and topic is with a blister formation. Here it is so roomy. So we call this as bullous. Bullous, bullous lichen cleavers. It's about the liquefactive regeneration of the lower or the basement. Then every door.